Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to the stream. Um, oh my goodness, what is with these frames? Hold on one second. <laughs> and, oh, of course, yep, yeah, uh-huh. Yep, I knew that was gonna happen. If it's not one thing, it's another. If it's not my audio, half the time, not half the time, every time it's been my audio so far. <laughs> <laughs> All right, awesome. Well, uh, today I'm hoping to finish up um, the Mark Mini that I've been working on this past week. Um, did a little bit of work off stream just to see if I couldn't clean up some of the stuff from his face that I wasn't really happy with. I also added some pupils and some, uh, some reflections on the eyeballs. But today I'm hoping to uh, finish him up, do some work on the cloak, do some work on the base. And uh, yeah, so... Let's go ahead and get started. So here we go. Here is Marky Mark. And let's see if I can actually frame this correctly because, you know, why do everything correctly the first time when you can just not? There we go. And once again, my webcam is all janky. All right. This is a very professional stream, obviously. I am the greatest at stream. <laughs> yeah, let's fix this. So you'd think I would finish this, you know, before the stream even started, like an intelligent human being, but I never claimed to be intelligent. So there you go. And fixed. Sweet. All right. Well. As I was saying, <laughs> we're going to try to finish up Mark here. Let's get a little bit of light here. There we go. Um, like I said, I did some work on his eyes. I added some uh, pupils. I did a little bit of smoothing around the face. I felt like the colors were a little bit too contrasty, so I fixed that up. Um, I did a little bit more work. I brought out some red on this little chest piece here. And I did some smoothing out on the, um, the transitions on this book. Uh, so what I want to do today is I really want to start diving into uh, his cloak and all the leather pieces that he's got going on here. I think they look really, really cool um, just with some of the texture. Um, now, of course, this is a, a Hero Forge mini, which, you know, they don't always have the greatest uh, detail, but this thing actually has quite a, quite a few interesting details to it. So we'll see what we can do. So. First things first, I want to go ahead and get um, the green shade that I'm going to be using um, set up. So when I base coated this, I base coated it with my airbrush just because there's a lot of material here and it makes it a little bit more difficult um, to do on stream. So I was kind of lazy and I did it that way. So, um, so for now, what I'm going to do is take a little bit of Goblin Green from Army Painter and throw some of that on the wet palette. And we'll mix that with uh, a little bit of this black gray, which I'm really finding out has become, or is, is starting to become one of my favorite like utility paints. When I don't want pure black, but I still want to darken something up quite a bit. Um, it's really come in clutch sometimes. So let's grab our brush. I'm gonna start off with the monument number three. Add a little water to that. We're just gonna start pulling this paint away and start getting our mix in. Now one thing that I've always found with darker paints is you really don't need as much as you think. It darkens it up really, really quickly. See, you can kind of tell already. A little bit of water to that just to make it easier on me to mix it up so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna try to match the shade that I have on mark already um, just so that I can start covering up some of the mistakes and paint overs from everywhere else I'm gonna use a little bit darker which isn't gonna take much time at all it's just a couple spots here and there Okay. 
just like that nothing too fancy we're just doing some cleanup there were a couple spots I really wasn't happy with the coverage uh, with the airbrush mostly because it, it, yeah I just wasn't happy with it It does look like this paint is actually a little bit too light, so I'm going to take a little bit more of my gray-black here. Try to get rid of most of this paint. I just want a little bit on my brush. whole thing with this miniature the whole time I've been painting it and really any miniature that I paint it's okay if you make mistakes it's all you can always go back and fix it later but just go ahead and get some some work done on it before there's no rush all right so next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start identifying the different parts of the miniature where I really want to start laying down my highlights for instance on this particular miniature his knee is coming a little bit forward out of his cloak so I'm really going to want to highlight right along the edge here, um, kind of coming up towards the knee, because uh, that's where the light would be hitting. Um, really anywhere on like the chest and torso area, I'm going to be adding uh, highlights along the raised position. Uh, same with the cloak. It's kind of kind of going to be the opposite on the on the uh, the sleeves, because uh, the sleeves I'm really going to be looking to. Um, add highlights on the tops of the folds versus along the folds on the back we have a very flat uh, piece down at the kind of the skirt area so there's not gonna be a ton of highlighting done but what you can see is we have these swooping areas right so right here along the back side we've got kind of a shelf here a divot and then it flares out at the end so we can maybe do some of those same transitions that we did with the book and try to get a really smooth transition I see some more mistakes from earlier. Let me just throw some paint on that. And then similar to what we did uh, with the Elbereth uh, model, we're going to be edge highlighting all the leather bits just to make it look like the center of the leather is darker and the edge of the leather is a little bit lighter. That will give us kind of an illusion uh, that that weather is that leather is worn in. Um, so I think that's what my game plan is. I'm a, I tend to work from top to bottom uh, most of the time, but I think I want to start with the pants. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out some of this uh, with a slightly lighter shade than what I was actually base coated with. And I'm just going to start working that highlight in. Really what I'm going to do with this first coat here is I'm pushing that highlight all the way to the point where I believe that the light would stop actually interacting with those pants um, in that way. So we kind of almost have like a, a fold here where it's kind of creased. What's going on, Liam? I'm just going to bring that highlight down to a point right there. How's your day been going, my man? Nice. Dude, I used to I used to play Age of Empires all the time. I used to love that game. I don't know why. I, I probably just stopped playing because I discovered first-person shooters. But, dude, 
Me and my brother used to play that game all the time. I am I'm super grateful that I can be on stream tonight because I had kind of a not a stressful day, just a really busy day at work. It's nice to come here, hang out with y'all, and just relax for a little while. Paint some minis. So like I said, I'm working this highlight all the way down. Um, again, we have some folds here that I want to make sure we're, we're working in. Yeah, and I like RTS, especially like, I'll tell you one one um, RTS that I really enjoy, mostly because it's more of a war game, um, is I love the Total War series. Um, so Rome 2 Total War was probably my favorite of the series. Um, I still play it every so often. Me and my brother had a campaign going that kind of <laughs> fell apart, but um, maybe we can restart that. Again, we used to play that. You know, we played it. I played the original uh, Rome Total War when we were kids, um, and then I played. I think we played Rome Total War Two when it first came out too. I can't remember if it was that one or if it was um, Total War Empire. I think that's what it was called. It was the one where you like can from like the sixteen start like the sixteen hundreds. And then you go up to like the Revolutionary War. You really should. Um, again, it's more of a war game than it is a real time strategy. So like it's, you know, where Age of Empires, you have like individual units and economy and stuff like that. Um, Total War is more. Yeah, you have economy and stuff like that. But you control, like for instance, in Rome Total War, you control legions instead of individual units. Um, so you might have like a legion of cavalry or a legion of infantry. You might have like, say you play Sparta, you may have a, a, a legion of, well, it's not a legion, but a group of hoplites, an entire phalanx of hoplite, hoplites, I guess. Um, And so you would control that unit, all of your units across your army versus individual units. And so it's much more like, um, almost like a historical thing, I guess you could call it. just going to take a little bit of a lighter color and go back and start brightening up these highlights just a teensy bit. It's okay if it looks a little too bright or if it kind of, you know, looks a little too sharp because we'll fix that later with a glaze. We just really want to bring out some of this texture here. Very similar to what we were talking about, uh, I think it was with Elbereth's miniature. You really want to make sure that we're avoiding islands because the way that light generally interacts with stuff that diffuses it, such as cloth and skin, you're not really going to see 
individually highlighted parts, right? So, you know, the, it'll catch, the light will catch the cloth and, and, and uh, kind of disperse it. So I'm just gonna make sure that all of our highlights and on this cloth are connected in some way with each other. Again, this cloth is very round too. So one of the thing, uh, things that I'm trying to do is we don't want to put any sharp edges that really aren't there. So if if the cloth or if his knee and leg give us a round shape, we want to make sure that where our highlights connect, we are adding roundness to those highlights instead of sharp edges. my brush off and we can start kind of starting starting the process of blending all of this together for that I'm gonna use my smaller brush so we'll transition to my number one monument brush and we'll take a little bit of this off to the side I'm gonna make a glaze and again this glaze I'm gonna try to keep it around 50% water 50% paint dab off the extra we're going to test on my thumb here that's exactly where I want it again pulling towards the color we're highlighting with we're just going to start to blend these lines in making sure that we are sticking to the same direction as we paint across those lines. Just so we get some nice smooth transition where it looks a little bit more blocky and a little bit more sharp. Some of these look fine uh, just with the way that the cloth is sitting. Some of them I want to soften up just a little bit. I'm trying to target is some of these uh, folds are very sharp and I'm okay if those don't have smooth transitions because in, in reality they would uh, they wouldn't right where I'm trying to really get these smooth transitions in are the places where we have flatness right because that's where that light is going to hit and diffuse versus giving us a sharp contrasty shadow Wherever we have flat bits, that's really where I'm targeting my wash. So while that dries, let's go ahead and move on to the back of the cape. Now, like I mentioned earlier, the back of the cape is probably going to be the most 
uh, interesting bit because we have a couple different transitions, right? We have right up here, just above his backside. But then we have this almost like second transition with the cape where it flares out. So we're just going to start our highlight at the top. We're going to work our way down to where this little divot ends. And then we're going to restart our highlight where it flares out. And again, no islands, so we want these cloth these highlights to be connected which is where the side here is going to come in because we have this flare out but there's no divot here on the cloth so this whole area would be highlighted all the way down so we'll use that to help emphasize um, emphasize that little divot little bit of shadow and one of the things that I, I noted when we were starting this project is that whenever I get a miniature where there's a lot of flat area I always find that to be more of a challenge than one with a lot of detail because a miniature with a lot of detail has a lot of detail right so the details make it interesting not necessarily the uh, paint job, but with this, the paint job is the focus, right? And because there are fewer details on these coattails, we've got to kind of add interesting, uh, interesting details to it. And then once we get back up to the front, we have some more folds to where we're going to highlight, very similar to what we did with the pants. I'm not overly concerned about paint, the green paint getting on the leather because we're gonna go back and, and, <laughs> and, and change that anyway. Just, again, establishing that little divot, making sure that we give it some nice, nice emphasis. And because a lot of this is flat area, we're gonna go in after we're done with this kind of base coat-ish bit. And we are going to um, do a little bit of cleanup and start adding in some of that smoothness that we want to see. Right, so we're gonna want this transition. We have this nice dark patch right here, um, but right now it's kind of contrasty. Um, so there's that sharp edge between the light and the dark. So we're gonna want to smooth that out a little bit, but we're not gonna do that just yet because it's on to our next highlight. So this is gonna be interesting, right? So the highlight on the top here is gonna be at the very edge of this highlight but on the cape, it's gonna be at the bottom, right? Because as the cape flares out, the more away from the body it gets, the brighter it's going to be. Uh, same with this little uh, piece here. Um, but with this one, the shadow is being cast by that little divot. 
Um, so we're just going to highlight right up to the edge of this. Bring it back a little bit. We're not gonna use too much here. And down here, I'm pretty much this entire little triangle area down here. It's gonna be this brighter green. And we're gonna work this around because this, this cape has kind of a, a curve towards the end of it. And so we're gonna bring out that curve and that's what we're gonna be highlighting. get right up on the edge there and then we're gonna highlight on the top of these folds just like we did earlier but again no islands right work in that transition there so almost as if we're putting like that second hot, like dark spot um, we're just doing it all the way out to the edge what I mean by second dark spot is we have this here and so we're just kind of putting another ring around the whole thing One thing that's interesting about this model, or at least, not necessarily the model itself, but the prints that happen. And I, I've experienced this with a lot of Hero Forge minis, and I'm not sure if it's because of the way that they're um, processed, but I always have these interesting like striations coming through. Every single print I've ever done from them, I always have these, even if I don't have these without any other 3D print that I have. I don't know if it's just because um, they're not that noticeable when they're printed at the correct size, which would be the 28 millimeter. Uh, or if that's, you know, an issue with the mesh processing or whatever, I always get those. They don't often look super obvious, but they're always there. In every single model I've ever done with them. Some of them, they've been super easy to get rid of um, just through uh, filing and sanding. Um, but these, a little bit harder to get rid of. And we're gonna have to get under his arm a little bit here. Which is hard to see, I know, but I'll do the best I can. There's the highlight pattern that I wanna go for. And again, it doesn't look great right now because we haven't started the smoothing process, but we're gonna do the same thing on his back except the opposite, right? So if you're flaring out at the bottom, like right here where these tails are, it's gonna get lighter as you go out. But as we go towards his shoulder blades here, it's gonna be the exact opposite. So the further up we go, the darker because the further out is, you know, it's blocking the light. And then the further down, just on top of this belt is really where we're going to see the brightest highlight. At least that's the way I envision it. And I could be utterly incorrect and wrong. But you know what? It's a learning process. We'll work back in our darker shade here. I could probably be smarter in the way that I manage my colors here. You know what? It works for me. It may not be the most efficient way of doing things, but the one thing I've learned throughout the painting process is not everything is going to work for everyone. Just do whatever works for you. And if it's quote unquote wrong, who cares? If you're putting out, if you're having, number one, if you're having fun, and number two, if the product that you're able to put out looks good, or if you think it looks good, 
then who cares what if you're using the quote unquote wrong or right technique. Just do whatever works for you. Whatever's the most fun for you. If you're not having fun in a hobby like this, then what's the point? Especially if you're doing this for somebody else, at least in my mind, I want to put out the best product that I can for them. Oh, oh no, no! Hoping this works. I don't think it will, but it might. Oh, crud. Disaster has struck. that I've got to go get a paper towel I can get most of this paint off it's just in the hair the hair was probably the best possible result because that's a little bit easier to fix than say his face this is not good y'all but you know what we're gonna remain calm and we're gonna do what we can to fix it because the worst possible thing to do in this situation just panic and start just tossing paint and water everywhere. Well, Cal, I'm not sure if that was a happy little accent or it was almost, I'm not going to lie. If, if this miniature had gone face down and actually got covered the fa covered his face and I could not wipe it off. Oh yeah. At least, again, at least it's the hair. So the hair is probably the e going to be the easiest thing to fix. Uh, again, if I had, if I had done that to his face, I would be, man, because I spent what, almost an hour and a half last night alone, or uh, um, not last night, Monday night on stream just on his face, and then I worked about another hour on it off stream. So. But stuff happens. We move on. Again, it's just his hair, and, and thankfully the um, the black gray that I was using for his hair is the same color that he dropped into. So all I really need to do is um, go back and do some more of that dry brushing that we did on Monday, and it'll be back right as rain. I'm gonna turn my wet palette around here. I learned something on Monday that my desk is actually slanted this way a little bit, like towards me. Um, and that's causing all the water, my wet palette to move to one side and it's causing all my paint on, um, on the far side of my palette to dry out faster. All right. But yeah, that was, that was definitely a blunder, but it's okay. 
again i'm just glad I, it didn't do that on his face because I, that would literally i probably i'm not gonna lie i probably would have ended the stream because again that's that was the one part on this miniature that i've worked the hardest on if it got ruined i don't know what i would have done Just being honest. Just trying to again work some of these highlights into these folds on the front of his cloak you can already see it looks so much nicer right from between now and that flat green that we had earlier you know we're starting to see life come into his clothes and it's starting to look like he's actually wearing them versus it being just a bunch of dried up chemicals in some water we're starting to see mark instead of paint. Which is the most exciting thing I think about painting is really when your miniature starts to come to life and you start seeing character and depth and beauty. You start to wonder if this person actually has, you know, thoughts and which of course they don't because it's ultimately just paint and resin. <laughs> But like, I don't know. I love giving my miniature stories as I paint them. And it's uh, it's been cool being able to paint the Trials of Imagination miniatures because they already have stories. And so I can work that into my paint, right? Like with Mark here, I could have put his pupils, like his eyes looking down at the book, but instead I have him looking straight ahead. So he kind of has this like smirk so I could have had him smirking looking down at his book, but recently Mark has been a little bit snarky on stream. And so I have his eyes looking through his eyebrows. So he kind of has this like snarky look to him. I love it so much. Um, but again, that's just one of those things where I have this story that's being told by my friends and Man, I get the privilege of painting them and telling that story in a way that nobody has yet. I love it. Again, all we're doing is we're just looking for places on his arm where light would strike and hit. And we're just making sure that we're working in those highlights. <laughs> exactly. The meaning of life. Um, to figure that out, we might have to build a supercomputer. Then after hundreds of years of calculations and thinking and processing, we'll finally know the meaning of life. Also, if you get that reference, you're awesome. I don't know. I don't know about that one. I mean, I can't, you know, I can program or I can't, I can't program a computer. Somebody can program a computer to do calculus who can't, you know, in a split second, but they themselves cannot do calculus. Or at least as fast as the computer can.
You missed it, Calico. I dropped Mark in paint and almost had a heart attack. <laughs> is it Catch-22 or is that just the Matrix? Nice. How'd that work out? Okay. Now we're starting to get somewhere with the clothing. Now again, some of this might not be realistic as far as like how light would actually interact with these clothing, these clothing, this clothing. Again, we're not really looking for accuracy as in what it would actually look like in life. I mean, obviously we want to follow the certain rules of like, you know, light and physics. <laughs> um, but for instance, light may not interact with this miniature the exact way that I'm painting it. But like if I were to add highlights on the underside of the clothing, but the light source is on top, you know, then <laughs> that doesn't make sense. So we're kind of using a combination of what would this actually look like in real life? As well as some artistic expression, I guess you could say. Trying to make it look good, but also a little bit real. So we're bringing in a little bit more of our goblin green here. start doing our really bright highlights on his clothing. No, I, I've never really got into Pokemon. I don't know why. It's like I was I played like just like every other person and their mom played Pokemon Go when it came out. But I never had the opportunity of playing or watching the show when I was a kid. Um, thanks, mom. <laughs> um, so I never really got into it. I know it, it looks like fun, but it's just one of those things, you know, if gets to a certain point where if you haven't played it, you're probably not going to. And that's kind of where I'm at with Pokemon. That's the way I want to do it. Do you know what would have made that accent earlier significantly worse? Is if this was like a 28 millimeter version. It was just small enough to land in the in the uh, paint and then like get completely covered. That would have been terrible. Interesting. So it's more than just like a collecting game. It's more like in depth, almost like a RPG versus a uh, actual like collection game. As far as what, Liam? Talking about the computers or?
because I, I think you're right. If that is what you're talking about, I, I think you're right. It depends on how we're defining our terms, right? If we define intelligence as the speed at which you are able to do a calculation, then a computer can be more intelligent or, or smarter, I should say, than the person who created it. If you're talking about the ability to say, like just the app, just the knowledge that we have, then yeah, I think Calico is right. Where was it Calico that said that? Yeah, Calico um, in that it's only a smartest person who made it. So I think in a conversation like that, we really need to figure out what we mean by intelligence. I would determine intelligence as, you know, a combination of access to information and the speed at which you can access that information. But then I guess the question would be like for for chess, for instance, like how do you program an AI to beat somebody in chess? Well, you kind of have to program them with the knowledge of how the game works, uh, program them with different openings, uh, different counters, things like that. So I think with that, in those examples, I think Calico might be right, where you can really only create an AI that is as smart as its creator. But in the case of that StarCraft one, right? I, again, I think we need to define our terms here and this is getting really deep for a painting stream, but okay. <laughs> but I'm enjoying it. <laughs> All right, so what I think I should do at this point is I'm gonna go ahead, throw on my glaze or create my glaze. And start smoothing this out a little bit. This is gonna be an interesting little bit here where we're actually going from quite a dark color to quite a light color. But we'll make it work. The chess AI? I think I'm all for an AI uprising there, Calico. Because I, I really don't want Keanu Reeves to be the savior of the world. <laughs> Again. some nice smoothness there. Now we're going to get some of these harder to reach spots here.
Can you imagine if there was an AI uprising and like all they wanted us to do all day is just like eat hamburgers? I'd be all for that kind of AI uprising. But like we are now your overlords. Eat cheeseburgers. I'm like, okay, I'm fine with that. <laughs> I'd probably be fine with that for like three days. Before I'd be like, all right, for once in my life, I actually want a vegetable. <laughs> all right, so we're going to take some more of this paint. Kind of want to soften up these kind of hot spots that are going on here. So I'm just going to take a really thin glaze and just start to go over this dark spot just to lighten it up a little bit. our brush to kind of move it away and move it around so that we're not getting too light. And so that we're not getting any like pooling or anything like that. Just like that. Just a little subtle shadow compared to some of the other ones, right? transitions nice and smooth. Yeah, I saw that one. It was hilarious. Like the yogurt leaves and everybody dies or something like that. I can't remember exactly how that particular episode ended, but I remember like really enjoying it and thought, thinking that was like glorious. <laughs> So now what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to transition to my small brush here and we're going to start uh, doing this top bit here. But before we do that, I need some more paint. We'll bring in some of our black gray just like we did before, and we'll try to mix it to where we get just a couple shades lighter than our base coat. Add a little water to make mixing a little bit easier. You know, I love I love the uh, Boston Dynamic uh, videos that uh, Corridor Crew put out. <laughs> Those are amazing. All right, so even though we're working on a smaller scale, we're doing the exact same thing we were. Oops, looks like I need to bring in a little bit more uh, bright green. Yeah, I'm planning on it. I just haven't decided what I'm going to put in there. Uh, a lot of the times when I'm doing books, because it's so small, I just put like squiggly lines to uh, indicate that there are words there. Um, but I kind of want to actually put a message in there for old Liam. I'm still debating on what it is, but one thing I do know is I probably won't do it on stream, so it's a surprise when he gets it.
Where would what be the the words? It would be yeah, it would be in the book. So I was watching a. Uh, this made me feel a little bit better about keeping pulling like whenever I pull the mini back off of a out of frame i was watching a, a youtuber called miniac and he's been doing live streams and uh like uh, uh painting tutorials for 17 years and he still has trouble keeping his miniatures in frame made me feel a little bit better about being terrible at it as well Also, it's a day of days because I didn't have a single audio issue when I started the stream today. It's a m Christmas miracle. Although the entire stream last night, for those of you who caught it, I apologize, but I was broadcasting in like left ear only mono or um, stereo but it was only coming out of the left side. <laughs> so that was a fail. But we I think we all still had fun, so that's that's the point. As long as we all had fun, who cares about the audio besides literally me? This is probably the part that I enjoy the most. It's kind of, kind of like a Zen moment where you really start concentrating on what you're doing. Again, making that miniature come alive. So one interesting thing about this clothing is there are several parts that are peaked at the top and sloped down on the bottom. Now that, you know, kind of the way that the light would probably interact with that. Again, I don't know. I'm still, um, still a beginner. And I still don't know exactly how light works, but does anybody really know how light works? I don't think so. Um, anyway, so light wouldn't actually hit the uh, hit those and highlight it. So we're going to end up with these interesting areas where you have a much larger shadow um, and a much smaller highlight, which just lends itself towards this miniature looking different, right? Interesting, fun to look at. Keep looking back at chat because I half expected something from Calico, something from Calico to pop up. <laughs> it's like I know she's gonna say something. What's she gonna say? And is it gonna be modded this time? <laughs> my is my auto mod gonna be like no? <laughs> there it is. almost feel like even though this is a chatting just quote unquote just chatting stream almost feel like just not talking because this music and this detailing is just hmm. after a long difficult day at work I was really looking forward to this
Well, I guess what I meant, Liam, isn't necessarily how what light is, but for instance, we know how it reacts to things, right? For instance, we know that it's a wave and a particle, or acts as a wave and it acts as a particle, right? So it refracts, it reflects, and uh, all that cool stuff. So we know how, like, what it does, but we don't necessarily know why. If that makes sense. Science, science, and stuff like that can tell us why something happens, but, or I'm sorry, how something acts it doesn't necessarily be able to tell us why. Right? So science can tell us that light acts like a wave and acts like a particle, but we can't see a light particle. We can't see a light wave, right? We can only see how light reacts and make theories based upon what it's doing. Unless there was some discovery since I took science last. <laughs> So we've gone on this stream so far, we've gone from theorizing about the AI, the AI uprising to now science time with Liam and Mike. <laughs> oh, I love this stream. Ooh, shaky hand. Somebody in YouTube land when I post this will correct me and be like, oh no, we know exactly how light works and all this stuff. And I'm like, okay, good to know. I don't know if we do or not. I don't think we do. So now I'm just adding the bright green, just the very peaks all these little folds here just to give it a little bit of a little bit of a tension a stormer theory yeah exactly <laughs> oh no is that a new stream segment like we get 20 minutes and we have we have a, a, like every 20 minutes we have a, a stormer theory And they're all just slightly wrong. <laughs> it does. I need to come up with some theories to ruin now. I think that is done as far as the uh, the top cloak there at least I'm happy with it all right let's move to uh, the let's do the gloves next because that's and there's only one glove so it'll be a little bit less time-consuming so the gloves I normally I use <laughs> words hard How'd you, okay, Calico, how did you ruin the force? More than, uh, than uh, what's his name did by adding midichlorians because that was pretty bad. <laughs> oh, that's right, I remember, yeah. <laughs> oh no, I remember that now and now I wish I didn't remember it. You did ru you ruined Star Wars, Calico. You ruined Star Wars. 
I thought only George Lucas could do it, but you've you succeeded where he could not. Also, I'm surprised the auto mod didn't pick that up. I don't know why it didn't. I don't care, but I'm just curious why it didn't. So for those who have no idea what Calico is talking about and weren't there during that glorious conversation, because the force and midichlorians are passed down genetically, so certain adult things have to happen in order for you to have a baby Jedi. Uh, her theory is that the force is therefore an, uh, an STD. And it somehow makes sense and I'm terrified. I went from a nerd who's like, oh, I wish I could have the force to being, uh, no, I don't. <laughs> All right. So we're mixing in some of this, uh, um, snow shadow in with this black gray, just to give me a bit of a lighter gray to use on these gloves for those uh, highlights. using a little bit of a lighter mixture than I was before. A disease is only a disease if it makes you uneasy. Well, I guess it depends on your definition again. All right, here we go. Definitions again. <laughs> when I put this, oh gosh, I'm so tempted when I put this on YouTube to be like uh, painting in, in uh, painting in existential dread. Now knowing that the force is a disease which is transmitted via adult things. God, I hope there's nobody under 18 on right now. <laughs> it's supposed to be a family friendly stream, y'all. Yeah, we're just adding a glaze to our gloves here just to soften that highlight up just a tiny bit. Fair enough, fair enough. I take your point and I concede it. Don't you know that death is a lot more family friendly than <laughs> no, <I'm joking. laughs> All right, let's move on to our leather color. Um, so we used the um, I believe we used earth brown for the leather. So we're gonna grab a little bit of that and then I'm gonna grab um, this here. It's called leather brown. It's basically just a lighter version of it. Um, so I'm going to, I'm dropping everything. My goodness. I just don't drop the thun thun thun. <laughs> I 
and we are just going to slowly mix in some of this leather brown just so that we can get a nice combination between the two to start off our highlighting process. Rude in like the British sense rude or rude as in the robots themselves are rude. And also if you say that killer robots are rude, I feel like that's the most Canadian thing I've ever heard in my life. Oh, we don't like those killer robots. They're rude. Okay. Then I, 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 I say again, that was the most Canadian thing I've heard in a long time. So we're just going around uh, the leather with this lighter color that we made here. Just highlighting that edge. And then we'll go back around with the leather, pure leather brown. And just give it a nice edge highlight. Can you imagine if, like, the voice for the killer robots was like a Midwestern mom? Oh dear, we're gonna just have to go over there and just shoot you in the face. I'm so sorry about that, but you know, I didn't have a choice there. would be amazing. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have to I'm going to have to shoot you in the face, don't you know? Oh no, I didn't like that one bit. Oh no. Funnily enough, I feel like I do a better impression of a Midwesterner, a Midwestern mom than I do a, any anyone from the South being born and raised in Georgia. going to do some selective highlighting on this like there are some places where it's a little bit thin I don't think I'll highlight that bit up like I am with the rest exactly <laughs> I'll be like ma'am I need you to get off your bike and I need you to come home for termination purposes all right there now stop it come home it's time for your termination gosh i feel like i'm insulting multiple cultures right now <laughs> i've insulted canadians by saying that robots are rude is the most canadian thing i've ever heard and i'm insulting all midwestern moms
But I feel like the Midwestern moms would just be like, oh no, it was it was really funny. We would tell you if we didn't like it, but I thought it was funny. You should do it again. <laughs> All right, so we're just gonna do the top of the belt here, just like we did the bottom. kind of in an awkward place for lighting it's hard to see it with uh, just my little lamp here I need to get better lighting I think I said this on the last stream there's a couple upgrades I'm gonna make if I decide that this is really something I want to start doing uh, a little bit more I want to get a better camera um, obviously because like this little Brio you know it does a decent job but it's not the to the resolution that I want and then I need to get some better lights um, both because I think I think the stream is lit fine but I'm having a hard time actually seeing what I'm doing with the way the lighting is set up right now so I'd like to find a balance between me being able to see my work and you being able to see my work so I think some better lighting and a new camera <laughs> he does doesn't he Except for his eyes. I don't know if you can see his eyes, but his eyes are like, seriously. He's got kind of that snarky mark look going for him. I'm going to take some of the same mixture here. I'm just going to start highlighting the edges of the book here too. Just to give it a little bit more definition. One thing that like for instance as far as lighting goes that I've noticed is when I get off stream and I go to look at it in my normal painting area there are there are things that I'm just missing here I want to be able to show the whole process on stream versus just the initial painting like I want to I want to be able to finish all of the details on stream but I really can't do that with my lighting setup here so we'll get a better camera so you can see better and get some better lighting so I can see better. Thinking of uh, just investing in like a Sony A5 5100 because I think that's uh, you know a pretty popular streaming camera and just mounting it right where my little webcam here is mounted. Or either that or like behind me so you're actually getting a view of what I see versus like this one is is like straight down and then like the image is, is like flipped upside down. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of this uh, leather brown and start doing some edge highlighting. Now with edge highlighting, especially with a, a paint that's a little bit more uh, thin, it's important that we get rid of a lot of the, that excess moisture. And I just do that by blotting it on my uh, like a little scrap piece of this is a little scrap piece of uh, um, blotting cloth that I have but like a paper towel and stuff like that works great for stuff like this So 
just highlighting in these edges here. Some of these edges, some of these angles, I should say, are, are fairly obtuse, which makes edge highlighting a little bit more difficult. So you really want a nice crisp edge whenever you're uh, doing this, something that when you drag the brush across it, um, you're not getting these large highlights. Instead, you're getting these nice crisp highlights. Just like that. You see it just looks a little bit more pronounced. It gives that a little bit of a worn look and it gives it a little bit of separation from that green cloth uh, versus what we have back here. So like if I'm a real quick, I'm a edge highlight this side, but then leave this side bare and then we'll be able to see how much of a difference something like this actually has on detailing. Hoping you can see this on camera. Not sure if my camera is going to be good enough, but you can kind of see that this side you have that clear separation from where the cloth and the leather starts, and it almost has that like worn-in look where those edges are have been like brushing up against stuff. Whereas this side, it's a little bit softer, a little bit less pronounced. So just having those two together is great. Dude, that would be hilarious. Or put a recipe for poutine. I need to find a recipe for poutine and put that in the book, Liam. <laughs> or we could put like a quote saying, um, like reading rainbow don't take my word for it oh yeah I know it's not too much but I don't have a whole lot of space here on this book to, to really write something out Liam's like please for the love of God do not put a poutine recipe in my wizard's spell book. to get a group on uh, Fortnite pretty soon. We haven't played in a while. Or at least I feel like we haven't played in a while. And as soon as I mentioned that, Liam's like, alright folks, I'm out. It's definitely not something for everyone and, and I genuinely when it first released and for the longest time because it you know it still has that reputation that it's it's not like a quote-unquote serious game or that like it's just a bunch of like squeakers crying about you know losing or whatever like it still ha it has but used to have a worse reputation for being that um, 
So for the longest time, I didn't play Fortnite either just because that reputation. I know for you, it's because you don't play like first person shooters, but that was that's my kind of reasoning why I didn't play for the longest time. That and I wasn't a huge fan of the Battle Royale format. Um, I really enjoyed at the time when Fortnite first came out, I enjoyed more of the, uh, just the standard like deathmatch. Um, cause I was definitely a Call of Duty guy growing up and now that I'm all grown up, I'm still kind of a Call of Duty guy, but you know. It is, um, and I actually, for the first time, I actually completed this season. Uh, as far as like battle pass, I haven't gotten any of the like, I say I haven't gotten any. I haven't gotten like a lot of the extras, mostly because I don't play enough to really care about the um, uh, different quests and things. But I did actually complete the battle pass. So there's that. There, that belt looks significantly better. Let's go ahead and add some of this highlighted goodness to the book. Just adding a little bit again to give these edges, um, the edges of the cover here, more definition, right? So you don't have to do this if you are into painting or want to start painting, um, but it's just one of those one of those details that can make a miniature pop, especially if it's a miniature like this where it doesn't it isn't necessarily like a quote unquote high detail miniature. Um, so adding, doing things like line, um, or edge highlighting, recess shading, stuff like that can really add a lot of pop to these miniatures. And when I say high detail miniature, I'm not saying that this miniature isn't detailed necessarily, but I've got some, um, miniatures. And, and you'll see it if you keep coming back. <laughs> um, I should, if I finish with Mark tonight, I'll start with some of the higher detail miniatures um, later on. Um, but like, you know, Hero Forge are definitely designed to be smaller form. So you can end up with a, a few quirks with the design um, and I've got some miniatures in the other room that I'm planning on starting Monday um, that will really like blow your mind as far as like the amount of detail that they have so I'm bringing a lot out a little of this skin shade because if you see on when I dropped him in the paint a little bit got on his forehead so we're just going to really quick correct that It's almost as if it never happened. Except for, you know, the entire black patch on his head. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or like one of the interesting things, if you go, the first thing you see when you open up a, or go to create a new miniature in Hero Forge is that like the arms are super long. It's really weird. Um, but again, they're meant to be an inch tall. They're not meant to be in this like, larger form factor, right? Um, or at least they're not designed to be, I should say. 
And so when you blow them up this big, you end up with things that are interesting. Like sometimes you'll end up with uh, the polygons, um, i.e. The, the actual thing that makes it look round when it's small. The polygons are so large when you blow them up that you almost lose some of the smoothness. Again, because it was designed to be small. Um, there are ways of mitigating that, um, like through sanding or filing, things like that. I tend not to, um, mostly because it's usually on larger surfaces like we have back here uh, when it does happen. And uh, usually it's not on the front of the miniature. So the front of the miniature usually has most of the detail. Um, so I want to focus on the detail and not the lack thereof especially when I'm 3D printing something that I'm planning on painting. If I was 3D printing something where I wanted the 3D print as a standalone object, then yeah, I might want to soften it up, make it look nice. But if I'm going to be painting it, there are ways of drawing the eye away from those issues and to other parts of the miniature, right? Like we were talking about on Monday, even though this miniature doesn't have a ton of detail, there are things that we can do to make it look more interesting, um, right? We can add some flair like we have this collar. We can make his eyes really stand out and really be intense. We can make sure that his face is nicely sculpted. And um, I, again, if you look at his face, it looks appealing and it draws your eye towards it or it draws your eye towards the book and away from the shoes right or you know parts of it that might be out of proportion or look odd to somebody who is examining it so drawing the eye away from those details with with the way that we paint it um, helps quite a bit so I'm just highlighting up the shoes I'm not going to spend a ton of time on them because again we want all that attention to be on the face and the book but we don't want to neglect these areas. I've even seen some people, and I would love to try this. I'd love to try a grayscale miniature. And that sounds like it would be a really fun challenge. So instead of painting in colors where you can get away with a multitude of sins um, and mess ups and things like that, you would instead paint only in black and white. And it'll be a real test of how smooth can you get your transitions and your highlights. Um, how's your lighting, you know? Now there's ways of doing black and white just with like say a Zenithal highlight, which is something that we've talked about. But this would be taking it from just a white miniature to full grayscale. I think that would be a fun challenge. I think I wouldn't do well on it, but it would be a fun challenge. to turn my wet palette again because again since my desk is slanted I want to make sure that this side of my wet palette is staying wet found that out Monday Sorry if that my headphones hitting that made a pop. <laughs> okay, good. My head is not blocking this off. Good. Okay, good. 
big head, you never know where it goes. That sounded weird. Whatever. <laughs> well, Liam. Technically true in more than one way. I mean, Calico, right, sure. You're right. <laughs> about that off stream <laughs> all right so like we <laughs> <Gosh. laughs> uh, I both hate and love my uh, my uh, odd sense of humor it always it always uh never mind <laughs> but to answer your question calico absolutely answer that question is yes it does So we're taking that light brown, just making sure that we fill in all these areas that light would tend to hit a little bit brighter. Probably gonna regret in a little while is doing these boots so early uh, because the next thing we would do after doing the two areas on this uh, miniature that I want to do metallics on is gonna be the base and the way that we're gonna do the base might get the shoes a little bit dirty but that's all right because shoes ain't clean Hmm, do I want to use black or do I want to use gray? We'll use, yeah, we'll use this color. So we'll use some more of that black gray. We're really going to water it down because what we're going to do is we're going to paint the base a very dark gray and then we're going to dry brush all the way up to a bright gray. And what that's going to give us is kind of this natural stone look and feel to it.
So we grab our big brush and we're just going to start slapping it on there. Oh man. I should probably think before I talk sometimes. Eh, where's the fun in that? <laughs> Again, really thinning down this paint so I can get it all up in the crevices. Um, it's a lot easier to do it like that. Um, versus having to go and actually like outline each little gap between these cobblestones. Just water down it, uh, water down the paint and it will naturally run into those areas. It'll make your life so much easier. That's done. We'll grab our synthetic brush that we use for our metallics, and we're going to grab our um, iron breaker from Citadel. And we're going to start with our metallic paint. I'm not going to use a ton. Really, I'm all I'm going to use it for is his belt buckle and then the um, like sh like banding on the book here. Oh, no, 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 that's not what I wanted to do. Oh, no. I actually dipped the wrong brush in, which is fine. It's fine if it happens once. Um, so, kind of explain what just happened there since I kind of freaked out for no reason. Yeah, actually, I base coated this in, uh, with an airbrush. And on a lot of the larger miniatures um, that have a lot of area, I do use an airbrush. Um, it makes it significantly faster. I also use airbrushes for doing all of my priming on all of my miniatures. Um, I'll use it to base coat my entire my entire Warhammer army um, was base coated, primed, and base coated using my airbrush. So yes, I do use an airbrush. Um, it it struggles getting into detailing getting once you get into like details it's good for uh, like I said base coating and, and um, priming beyond that I don't really have a use or I really don't ever use an air, uh, airbrush at, beyond that I just at least the airbrush that I have is basically really good at slinging paint but not so great at fine work I could probably get a better airbrush to do that but for me kind of defeats some of the reason why I enjoy painting right I enjoy painting because it's relaxing it takes me kind of gives my mind something to focus on with an airbrush you know that compressor's loud can sometimes be obnoxious kind of like me um, so, you know, I prefer just to do exactly what I'm doing here 99% of the time. Ooh, shaky hand. Thank you. 
go. All right, guys, we are getting close to done here. We've got our metallics painted. We've got our miniature highlighted. We've got most of the shading done. And when I say most of, I think I will go through and do a pin wash on some of this just to bring out some of those really deep recesses. Yeah, let's do that. Where is my Nuln Oil? Here it is. So, Nuln Oil by Citadel. We're just gonna take a small synthetic brush. Grab some of that Nuln Oil. We're just going to start running it into these recesses. And it will naturally flow to the deepest part of those recesses and give us a nice deep shadow. Do have to be a little bit careful though. I don't want to get any of this wash on those really flat areas. sharp lines like along uh, along this like leather trim here we do it to all the deep highlight are the deep uh, um, deeper areas like up top and again this is just one of those details you don't have to do but in my opinion it just makes everything look sharper and crisper and more defined and we, especially on a miniature where it's not uh, where the, a lot of the details are exaggerated you want that definition I actually do have them set up. Um, why did something happen that I just missed? I don't see anything, but. <laughs> Liam, you had to tell them. <laughs> Uh, we had a, a one shot for TOI last night that I ran and I kept calling um, who did I kept, I kept calling somebody Liam who was it I kept calling Liam um, it wasn't Dirk was it Lava that's right so yeah I, I kept calling Lava Liam and <laughs> when I called Calico Liam earlier because it's, it's weird so Calico Liam is showing up as blue on my stream manager, but orange on fair, but orange on um, stream labs. And so that's what kind of confused me is like, I'm looking over here and like y'all anyway, it doesn't matter, but still he had to go and tattle. No, I still think it's hilarious. I am terrible, terrible with names. And I'll be the first one to admit it. Especially when they're very similar names like Lava, Liam. They both start with L. That's enough to set my brain in a direction where it will not return. Again, it was more of a color recognition. I just glanced up and saw the color versus the name.
sure I get all of these recesses done. I'm going to skip over some of these recesses, like where there's really bright coloring, like on this yellow. I'm not going to do anything there because that yellow already gives us a nice contrast between the lights and the darks. So I'm not going to worry about that, but like where you have like a dark green versus a light green or a, like a medium green, I do want a little bit more contrast in those recesses. Just to give a good separation between the two. It doesn't take much, just enough to really define that just deepest shadow. I'm trying to be a little bit more flavorful in my language. How's it sounding? I found myself like listening back to some of the stuff I say and I, I tend to use a lot of the same words or the same terms and I'm trying to change it up a little bit. Keep y'all guessing. Let's move on to these arms here. So they've got some nice folds here that that are just calling for a pin pin wash. One one thing I'd like to try one of these days. There's a technique where you take some uh, mineral spirits and you dilute. Um, oil paint and then you take the miniature and just absolutely douse it <laughs> in uh, a gloss finish or semi-gloss finish and then evidently when you put the like brush the wash on your brush and then make contact with that oil wash it supposedly like immediately like just runs into the the like the entirety of that recess and it's a lot easier and faster than this but I've been kind of nervous about trying that because oil paint is a lot harder to remove than acrylic paint if I make if I make a bad mistake. Which, I mean, mistakes are just learning, are just uh, opportunities to learn, so. But, you know, if I wanted to strip all the paint off of uh, miniature for acrylics, all I have to do really is let it soak in some cleaning solution overnight. And normally, it comes right off. I don't think it's that easy for oil paints. Moving on to our shoes here. Again, just adding it to some of these deepest recesses just to kind of give some definition to, to what's going on here. A little bit more than what I already have. I need to get a shotgun mic because this thing gets in the way. <laughs> I think that would be 
a little bit easier to work around and that way I don't have like this thing where it's like the sound is varying depending on where I'm, I'm going. Hey, it's purple now. Liam, you changed. I'm joking, I'm joking. same thing even though the recesses aren't as sharp where these pants meet the uh, the meet the boot here I'm gonna add a little bit of wash here just because I want that that clear separation between where the pants stops and where the shoe starts other than just the con the color we have because again whenever we're using colors from a, like a similar palette they can tend to be a little bit less like where does it start where's then not as bad with green and brown, but still. But with camouflage, it kind of blends together. spine here <laughs> I mean it's just a black wash so I'm sorry you don't like black calico see so you're trying to confuse me changing the color up again Paying attention now. Can't fool me with your tricks. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> So we're done with the pin wash. <laughs> Look, I don't know. No, this stream is definitely for y'all. Because I can do this off stream or on stream. I prefer to do it on stream because I want to hang out with you awesome people. a mistake there all right so I realized two things I left my dry brush both of them in the other room as well as some 
um, shade that I want. So I will be right back. Make sure half finished Liam doesn't do it. like purple and why'd you change it he says immediately after coming back <laughs> all right so next thing we need to do is fix your hair dude so we're actually close to the color of the hair here I'll just grab a little bit of this just do a little bit of repair on this haircut here. I'm really thankful for this uh, this rinse cup because it's got like these ridges on the bottom that I can use to dry off or to clean off my dry brushes because they're not the easiest things to deal with sometimes. All right, so where is muddy brown is what we want. This has got a little bit of red in it. Add a little bit more of that leather brown to lighten it up. And then just add a bit of bright, a little, just a dab of orange, just like that, and mix it all up. And this should give us the same kind of reddish color that we were using before. And we'll just go in and start highlighting up. Mark is saved. Did I say Liam again instead of Mark when I left? Everyone is Liam now, evidently. <laughs> oh no! Ah! 
I'm not gonna get away from this. <laughs> oh man. All right, cool. So we're gonna use a couple different paints here. We're gonna use uh, dark stone and field gray. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use dry brushing to start uh, building up the color on this base. Signs of a man crush. Calm down. <laughs> Calm down, Calico. All right, and as always, we're gonna wipe off most of the paint on the on the brush, just so that we're getting just the uh, the top portion of these stones. We're just gonna very liberally distribute this paint across the stone. It's basically the only time. Never mind, I'm not gonna go there. <laughs> I don't know, I might have a man crush on this miniature because man, I think it's turning out really, really nice. I, I genuinely do like the way this is turning out. All right, we're gonna take some of this uh, field gray now. This field gray is kind of a, uh, a grayish green almost. And that uh, stone color was kind of a brownish gray. And one of the things I like about using different colors like that where like it's not just a gray right it's several different colors um it gives just a life and dynamic range to the whatever you're using right so that it's not just gray there's grays and um there's grays and greens and all this kind of stuff uh Let's go with some ghost white. We're gonna add a little bit of that to this just to bring a little bit more of a lighter shade of this same color. I know what a man crush is. I've had man crushes before and the, not that the, it's, yeah. Pretty sure the only person that uh, any any guy would ever admit having a man crush on is either A, their absolute best friend in the world, B, their mentor, or C, Ryan Reynolds. But then again, I'd wager that it's more of an actual crush than a man crush with Ryan Reynolds. All right, so we're getting some white. We're gonna pick up some more of that uh, gray that I had earlier. We're gonna mix it in there, get a nice, just a straight gray. There's a lot of paint on that brush. That's unfortunate. That's one of the reasons I don't always like dry brushing. It's a very powerful tool. Sometimes you waste a lot of paint just not by meaning to. And part of that is just me being an amateur. But some of that is just dry brushing. Where's my white? There it is. One thing you might notice is I'm not actually cleaning off my brush when I'm dry brushing. I actually want a little bit of the old paint on there. So it helps make that transition between light and dark a little bit less stark a little bit more 
natural looking. Right, and we'll add a little bit more white. By a little bit more, I, I really want this to be a nearly white gray at this point. I'm gonna grab a little bit of this uh, green gray just to give it a little bit less of a, a little bit different of a color. With this pass, I really want most of this paint off the brush because I'm just looking to just highlight the very, very tips and tops of these stones just to kind of give them that light outline, almost like the line um, uh, highlights that we did earlier. And we have stone. Super easy. I don't know. I've never done a raid, so I don't really know who I would raid. I don't really follow anybody in the community right now. I need to get better about that. I just, I don't, again, I don't really know who to raid, to be honest. None of my, I don't think any of my friends are streaming tonight. Um, I mean, I'd be more than willing to. I just, again, I don't know who I would. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a wash uh, by Army Painter. It's called Strong Wash, I think. And I'm going to slather the base of this in it. Uh, and what this is going to do is it's going to, again, run into all these recesses and darken it up quite a bit more than it already is. And it will end up highlighting those reset or uh, shading those recesses. And those highlights that we just added with the dry brushing will really, really, really pop. Might help if I actually got in frame. Yeah, I mean, if you can suggest anybody um, from the community who, you know, would benefit from having an extra five or so viewers, then I'm all game. So let's move some of this around because we don't want it to, we want it to run into the recess. We don't really want it to pool like it is right now in some places. So we're just going to. Keep working this around until we get it the way we want it. And we got to kind of do this quickly because washes dry extremely quickly, much faster than a normal paint would. We really want to be strategic on where we place this stuff. I'm going to do what's called blacking out the base. So the edge of this base is pretty much just primer at this point. So I want to go around this edge, this black paint. It's just going to make it look a little bit more finished and a little bit more like it's almost like polishing your shoes, right? It just makes it look nicer. adds just like that one little touch.
the only pro thing about that style of uh, miniature holder that I don't like is you always end up around the base with two little spots that are covered up. All right, well, I introduce you to a finished miniature of Mark. Well, we finished him through a disaster <laughs> of dropping him into a pile of paint. But we came back, finished him, and I think he looks amazing. Like I said, I'm going to write something in this book. I'm not sure what yet. Um, and I will send it off to you uh, once I finish up... Um, finish that one thing that I normally do with any miniature that I paint especially if I'm giving it to somebody else is I will um, I'll give it 24 hours I'll set it aside and then I'll come back to it and I'll look at it and I'll see is there anything on this miniature that I can do better or is this as good as I can do um, I'm leaning towards this is as good as I can do um, right now I think this has been a really, really fun project. Again, whenever there's a miniature that has either plain detail or lack of detail, again, not saying it's a bad miniature, the challenge is to make it look interesting. And I and I hope we succeeded in that. I think he looks really cool. I think he looks super interesting. It's just different enough to make him look neat. In, and, and there are several things on this, on this guy that catches your eye. Um, and uh, I hope it caught yours. So I will um, go ahead and, as always, post up some um, um, pictures of him on my Discord, on the TOI Discord. And uh, yeah, um, I'll once everything's done, everything's dried, I will apply a matte varnish to him. And he will be ready to ship out to my Canadian friend, Liam. So um, thank you all for joining me in this, uh, in, in painting this awesome miniature. Mar um, um, Liam, thank you so much for actually letting me paint Mark. It's been uh, really fun and I can't wait for the next one. I've got four really high detail miniatures sitting in the other room right now um, that I'm really excited about. Uh, it'll probably take a little bit longer to paint those than it did with these TOI miniatures just because the sheer amount, sheer amount of detail. But I look forward to that process and I look forward to sharing it with all of you friends. So I uh, hope you had fun. I did. And I will see you next time.